So you can see our uh, gable roof system coming together. The next step is to install our barge rafters, which will protrude past the face of our gable ends. And to support these rafters, we have to install lookouts. So we will cut and notch the top of our gable rafter here uh, for a 2x4, which will support the barge rafters. So here is one of our lookouts that is going to support our barge rafter. When we install a lookout, the face of the lookout should be flush with the tail of our second rafter back. Um, but because we've already got this rafter installed, if we install this like, uh, like we have it now, it will actually be skewed out. So we want to cut back the tail, this uh, gable rafter tail, by the thickness of our lookout. So I'm going to make another, mark another line here at this thickness, inch and a half, and recut this plumb cut so that I can install this flush and it's parallel to my wall. This is what our lookout would look like if we did not cut back that gable and rafter. So we do want to cut that back. So I'm going to make my mark and I can just use my speed square um, find my inch and a half okay, and then I again need to mark a plumb line that is matching my pitch. I'm just going to use my barge rafter as a pattern or an angle template to mark my plumb cut, line it up with my mark that I made and mark it straight up. So that mark will be parallel to the end of my, my tail cut. One thing you'll notice on your uh, skill saw is uh, the rafter hook, okay, which is oftentimes an aftermarket uh, accessory for a warm drive saw. Some saws have them built in. The rafter hook allows you to set your saw on a rafter or a joist um, to temporarily hold it while you're walking around on the, uh, the roof of the floor system. Um, we are going to now cut this plumb line in place. Uh, it's good practice while you're in the lab here uh, to, to make several cuts uh, with the rafters in place because on the job site you'll often need to make these types of cuts in, uh, in, with the rafters in position. You may be tempted to cut from this side of the, of the rafter but beware that when you make that cut, when that blade or the uh, guard of the saw retracts, you actually expose the blade directly to your body. So it's much safer to make these types of cuts with the blade facing away from you. Now we have our lookout back in place. You'll notice that this, this gap here should be parallel now, now that we've cut back the tail of our gable rafter. The position or the exact um, placement of our lookout should be as follows. If you take a straight edge and ride it along the top of your rafter, it should just skim the outside corner of your lookout. And likewise up here, this should just skim the very outside of your lookout rafter. Okay, that is so that when you install your plywood diaphragm on the roof, the plywood can pass over that gap and hit the outside corner. So now I'm ready to notch the top of my gable rafter to accept my upper lookouts. Um, normally your lookouts may be two feet or four feet on center. In this case, since our roof is so small, we'll just have one upper and the bottom lookout. Uh, I want to position my lookout so that it's eight inches from the end of my rafter to the center of my lookout. So I'm going to hook my tape up here and 
I can make a market A that represents the center, and then since my 2 by 4 is 3 and a half inches wide, if I divide that by 2, I need to pull inch and 3 quarters on either side of 8 inches. So I'm going to come back to 6 and a quarter into 9 and 3 quarters. And then I can take my speed square and square up a line there and there. Okay, that will be the top of my cut. And then I need to cut down into the face of my rafter by the thickness of my lookout, which is inch and a half. So I can lay that out. I'm going to make it square to the top edge of my rafter. Down inch and a half. Down inch and a half. And if I just hold my pencil or my pen at the inch and a half mark and slide my Okay, slide my, my square up and down, I can mark that inch and a half parallel line to the top of my rafter. That will be the notch that I will make in the top of my gable rafter. Here's a closer view of the mark I've made for the notch of my upper lookout. I've marked both sides for my upper lookouts. So there's two different methods for notching out a, uh, a rafter here. Uh, the first method that we're going to show you is a repetitive cross cut. So we'll make several cuts across the top edge of our rafter, um, which will give us several curves. And then we'll just hit it with a hammer to break most of it out and then clean it up with a chisel. So that will be method one. The second method will be to make a plunge cut on the face of our rafter and then finish the, the two end cuts. When we cut from the top cord, we need to set the saw depth okay, so that our blade is not penetrating more than the thickness of our lookout. So we need to set the blade height at one and a half inches in thickness. The easy way to do that is to simply take a piece of 2 by material, set your saw blade, set your saw on top of it, and loosen the depth stop. And you can see now, okay, can you see that? We're going to lower our blade till we're about the same thickness as our saw, as our wood and then tighten your shoe. So we're also uh, just check and make sure that your bevel is set to zero. You don't want to be cutting this at an angle. You want to be cutting it zero or perpendicular. So we'll make our first cut and then we'll just make a cut about every quarter inch or so until we get to the other mark there. Now my favorite part, just whack it with a hammer, and the notch is there, have a little bit of clean up here, just take a sharp chisel, and clean that up, and then check your fit for your rafter, we're nice and flush there. Okay. On this side, I'll uh, show you the example of a plunge cut or the bottom cut, and then again, we'll just do the, the uh, top cuts. Since our saw is already set up for a proper depth, I'll do the top, top cuts first.
When I make my plunge cut, I need to reset the depth of my shoe to the full depth so I can make a cut all the way through the board. And when I do a plunge cut, I have to hold the guard up. Okay, again, I'm going to have the blade facing away from me. So I'm going to hold my guard up and just get as close as I can to that line. There's my plunge cut. Again, I'm nice and flush on the top edge of my rafter. So our design calls for a six inch overhang, which means we want the face of our barge rafter to be six inches from the face of our gable rafter. And keeping in mind that our gable rafter is inch and a half thick, we want our lookout to extend four and a half inches beyond the face of our gable, gable wrap. So to determine the length of your lookout, you can simply measure from the face of your second rafter back to the face of your gable rafter. In theory, if we laid it out properly, it should be about 23 and a quarter. And then you're going to add the additional four and a half inches based on the roof overhang of six inches. Remember we subtracted the inch and a half for the thickness of our barge rafter. So we take our design of 23 and a quarter layout, four and a half inches gets us 27 and three quarter inches. We measured when we laid out our notch, eight inches on center, and the first mark up here was six and a quarter. When we install our lookout here, we want to be parallel to the ridge. So I'll we'll just match that mark up here on the next rafter back, and make a mark at six and a quarter, and that will be the inside edge of my lookout. And then I can put a couple of screws Side edge of my lookout to the outside corner of my tail. Okay. Again, I'm just going to get my screw started here. And now I can position the second part of my lookout rafter. So again, your rafter tail should be flush with the face of the lookout and then also flush on the outside corner to the outside of the tail cut. And up here, should be flush on the top. You'll notice on the gable end rafters that the head is not cut back for the ridge. We simply cut at the center line ridge plumb line and the two rafters come together.